So hi everybody, welcome back. It's time to get stuck into the wiring now. Following on from the last video, we're gonna be doing some of the wiring on the baseboard here. Uh, this is gonna be DCC wiring, but some of the methods here will be applicable to those of you who are doing DC, the likes of soldering the droppers, that sort of thing. So do watch along. So let's get stuck in and get this wiring done. Here we have the baseboard out. Uh, if you watched my live stream from the 18th of January, you'll see I already started adding droppers to this. So I'm just going to continue on. I've got one dropper to add on here so you can see the method I've used. But let's flip it over and just have a little look at what I'm going to do and the sort of plan for the wiring. So obviously we have the track underneath. What I've done is I've written on here back and front. So when I'm working on upside down, I've got a reference to which is the front and the back because I use the wiring convention black to the back. So I know all the back rails are black, the rails to the front are red. It just makes it easier when I'm wiring for a quick reference when you look. So the plan is these boards will be daisy chained together by connectors, which will go into these chocolate block electrical connectors here. From here will come out uh, a bus, which will go across to a connector on the other side, daisy chained onto the next board. Obviously one of the boards will have the connection for the DCC system and the power supply for the points. This is why there's two. There's gonna be two uh, bus wires, one for DCC for supplying the track and one for power for the points because I use the SEEP type point motors. That'll be in a future video doing the wiring on those. So that's how each board's gonna be done. Two buses, one for points, one for the DCC. Uh, the bus is gonna be the usual 1.5 mil wire I use. We'll see, again, you'll see that later. And the droppers will be soldered onto that. So hopefully it'll all be nice and neat and tidy. The other thing I like to do is where the power comes in is I'll write on the board um, which wire is which and what they do. And what I tend to do is each bus will get a bit of insulation tape of a different color put around it and written on the board would say yellow is the DCC bus, green, black, whatever is the point supply or the 12 volt DC supply. Just when you're under the board looking, you can see quickly which wire is which. It just makes it easier for fault finding. So what I'm gonna do now, flip the board back over and I'll show you how I add the droppers. Normally with my droppers, before I lay a bit of track, I solder the droppers onto the bottom. So when you lay the track, you can drill one hole down through the baseboard, through the center, drop the wires down. And with that, you don't see the wires. It's covered by ballast, practically invisible. But obviously with this now, because I've used FlexiTrack, I've laid it in lengths, but now I've cut through it in various places. So now I now need to add droppers because I don't want to rely just on the fish plates to carry the current. I like to have every piece of track with its own supply. That way you get a good continuity of supply so you don't get your locos stopping or stuttering as they go around the layout. So I've done this on here now. I've added all the pieces. I've one left here to do so I can show you how I do it. I've got my two pieces of wire. I've pre-tinned the ends already, which is simply just taking the end and adding a bit of solder to it. Also written on my baseboard like I did underneath, I've got an arrow to the back and an arrow to the front, because obviously when you've got this away, it's not laid and you could easily get confused which way around it is. Just keep it simple. There it's written down, two seconds with a pencil. There it is, it's done. So I know now on here um, where the droppers have to go. So I'm gonna move the camera in a bit closer now so you can see what I'm doing. So as you can see here, I've drilled a couple of holes. We're gonna solder the droppers onto the outside of the rail. Obviously not the inside because that would cause derailments. So there's two holes drilled through the baseboard so we can drop the wires through. First thing I'm gonna do is take my wire brush pencil and just clean the rail where I'm gonna solder it. This will give uh, a good electrical contact and clean any debris off the rail that may cause it not to uh, solder properly. So 
I'll just cover rubs like that, that sorts it out. Remember now my convention, black to the back, quick look at the base where I've got it written. So the black one's going on this side. I'll just feed that through. And I've put a bend in the wire there. And just see where it's going to sit up against the rail like that. Now this is the sort of job where you find that you need half a dozen different hands. So now I'm going to take some flux and just paint it on. Flux simply helps the solder flow and it just makes your job a little bit easier. So I'll try and do this without getting my hands in the way so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take my soldering iron which has been heating up. I'm going to try and grab the wire. Hold it there a couple of seconds. You don't want to try and do this too long because you will start to get the smell of burning sleepers. Hopefully that has taken. There we go. You can see there how the flux has just helped that solder just flow along it and uh, solder it to the track. So now I'm going to repeat it on this side with the red one. The same process again. Feed it down through. Push it onto the side of the rail. Again, a little bit of flux. Now afterwards I will go along with the um, an old toothbrush and just clean these off because you can get a little bit of corrosion where it will go green from the flux. I'm trying my best not to burn myself. And that's the two droppers on. It's as quick and easy as that. It can take a little bit of practice and you will melt sleepers and that. I'm not too concerned with it here because obviously this is um, the fiddle yard so sitting underneath the scenic area. But certainly if you're doing this, a little bit of ballast over the wire, you're not going to see it. It's going to keep it well hidden. So afterwards, just give it a clean off. Making sure it's cooled down a bit so you don't burn yourself. Right, time to flip the board over and get on with the rest of the wiring. Board's flipped over. I've put in the bus for the power supply. Now, if you don't know what a bus is, it's just basically a wire that goes around your layout, carrying the power supply that you connect all your droppers onto. So obviously I've got uh, blue and brown, so positive and negative. Brown is the positive, blue is the negative. So the black wires will be going to the blue and the red wires will be going to the brown. So red, positive, black, negative. So I just need to sort all these wiring out now. It'll look hopefully a lot more neat and tidy. Just when you're putting the bus in, just make sure you have the connections the same on this side. So the brown is going into this one and the blue into this one. And likewise on this side, the brown's going into that one and the blue is going to this side and it'll be the same all the way around as they connect into each other. So I'm going to sort these wires out now and then I'll show you how I connect them to the bus wire. And you can see there as well what I mean about the yellow tape. So when you're underneath the board and you're looking at it with a torch, you can say, well, there's the yellow wire, that's the DCC supply, and I'll write it over here to say DCC supply yellow. Just makes it so much easier when you're crawling under a board trying to find a fault. So I'll tidy some of this up and get ready for joining them on. There you can see now, I've twisted all the black wires together, cut a section of the negative bus away, wrapped it around it, and put a drop of solder on. So I, I use my um, wire strippers like these just to pull a bit of the insulation back. 
if you don't have a pair of these, a Stanley knife, sharp knife, just to cut a bit away is fine. So you can see here, I've got all the red ones twisted around. So I take them, wrap them around on the negative, or oh, sorry, positive, red to the positive. Okay, and then a bit of flux on there. This will help the flux. The flux will help the solder flow through the wires around the copper and hold it in place and give you a good connection. I'll try and do this without getting hands in the way. I'll just move the camera a bit. So a bit of heat. And then let the solder. Again, as always with this solder, well ventilated room. It can be quite toxic. There we are. Let that cool for a second. That's quite tight on there now. So now what I'll do, a bit of insulation tape around that just to protect it, and that's it done. You can, if you don't want to solder, just use connection blocks like this to connect it all together. I just like doing solder. It's Especially when you've got the board up like this, it's easier to do. If you're trying to do it upside down, lying on your back trying to do it, it's not easy. It might be better off using something like this. But I just like doing like this because I think it's quick, it's easy, it's done. And it gives a good connection. So I'll put a bit of insulation tape around them and then do this side as well. And then we can flip it over. We'll hook up uh, a DC power supply to it just to test all the track, make sure it's all working. So I'll carry on with that and I'll come back when I've it done. There you can see the wiring on this side is complete. I've tidied up the wires using a staple gun just to hold them in place. Keep them a bit neat and tidy so they don't get pulled around. We'll probably have to move this one at a later date because um, it will be point motors going in through these holes here so this will need a little bit of moving around. This side's also wired in, ready to go. So what I'll do now is I'll flip the board over, I'll hook up um, a 12 volt DC supply and I'll use my track tester to make sure all the bits of track are live. Obviously I haven't done the frogs yet because those will be done with the seat point motors so those will be dead but I can certainly test the rest of the track. DC supply is hooked up Let's give it a little bit of power and then I have my little track tester. Picked this up from block signaling, I think it was about a fiver. Great thing to have just for testing track. It's use it on DC or DCC. So if I put it across, put the terminals across the track, it should light up. There we are. And next piece of track. Yep. And the point. Yep, yeah. piece of track there. Of course, where it won't work is on the frog, because that will be the next video, wiring up the point motors and the frogs using the switch on the point motor. But I can test everything else, and we can see that everything lights up. And that's important as well with this, that it's the same color that lights up which is red, but it looks yellow on the screen. So we can see here, across the frog, it's not working because these aren't wired up. So I'll say that'll be the next video. So that's that bit done. So there we go, the first bit of wiring's done. I said the next video we'll be looking at the point motors and wiring up the frogs. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can keep up with that. A big thank you to my channel members and Patreon members who are scrolling here. If you'd like to become a channel member or a patron, you can hit the link below or hit the join button. So I'll pop another video here, here, subscribe button's in the middle, give me a thumbs up, much appreciated. Any comments or questions, put them down below. Don't forget about my live streams, I do every Thursday at 7.30 UK Irish time. If you've got any questions, you can come along there, put them in the chat and I'll see if I can answer them. So as always, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, bye for now.